Let's talk about the rotation that we're seeing in the tech sector. How far through do you think we are in this? Oh, I mean, historically speaking, I would say we're really only probably in like the second inning. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I've made as a trader over 25 years is when you see rotations happen, to think after two or three days they're over. Understanding that the, the trillions of dollars it actually has to move around. So I think if in fact this is a real rotation, which I believe it is, then we're in the early stages of it. How much downside then, assuming this is a real rotation? I mean, it depends on the stocks. It depends which one. Uh, you know, the certain stocks that are based on uh, Jenga towers of hope and optimism without any earnings underpinning them. Uh, I like that Jenga towers. From the I know, I like that too. <laughs> that was great, right? Uh, yeah. That, then there's not. I mean, if people remember 1999, 2000, you saw stocks that went down. You well, they're down 40 percent. Maybe I could buy them now. Down 50 percent. So a company, let's say a HubSpot, that does not make money, they have to watch out in this rotation. There's going to be opportunities to buy expensive stocks that become less expensive, but still some expensive, and uh, and th that's going to be the interesting time right now is deciding what's becoming cheap and what's becoming uninvestable. So talk to me then about HubSpot. You said, look, these guys have got no pricing power. Their key, key product offering here, they've put down to zero effectively. But my understanding is their thesis is, look, the marketing that we see now spraying people with advertising is, is a dead model. You can pay zero for a very basic product as far as they're concerned. But if you want the features that they offer, you have to pay up for it. So surely what you're saying about no pricing power is, is not true. No, it, it is. Because what happened is in order to... They've decided to focus on the small and medium-sized business. When you focus on that and not enterprise, you deal with a higher churn customer. And in order to keep up with that churn, you then had to drop the price. And let me compare that to a, uh, another company I was here just last month discussing, which is Shopify. And as much as I was not thrilled with the Shopify, I'm still not marketing techniques, Shopify was actually able to raise prices on their customers last year because they have a compelling product offering. When you are in such a highly competitive area that HubSpot is in, and you can no longer raise prices, and the only way to attract new customers is to take your core product offering, the only thing that differentiates you between the rest of the market, the only thing that makes you you, and you drop it to zero uh, to try to introduce people to upsell them, it shows an actual weakness in their business. What about the fact that you suggest as well that their attendance inbound conference growth as well has dropped from 35% to, to 10%. If I compare them just in terms of where they are on the life cycle to salesforce.com, the growth trajectory that we're seeing there, even with the decline that you're talking about in growth, is better than salesforce.com at this stage. Are you expecting something well, more from first them? First of all, they're working because you're working off an extremely small number. They're not building anything with Salesforce. I, I know they want to be a Salesforce, and you can say Salesforce, and I could sit in this chair all day long and say Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett does not no, make me No, but they're in a different Buffett. part of the market uh, they, to Salesforce. They're not Salesforce. So I don't think they're, a they, they I don't don't think they're competition with Salesforce, but I'm just talking about the, the growth trajectory, the attendance that we're talking about is actually better. No, well, no it, it's not. Actually, you know, I don't have the Salesforce numbers of the Salesforce conference, but it's not at all. It should, for a company that loses money, the way they do for their inbound conference to go from 35% growth to 10% growth shows that they're hitting up to the law of large numbers. So, you know, if you were going to buy that, that tower of optimism thinking they're going to turn the corner because we're only in the beginning stages of this big curve, you're not. And you also see that coincided with the deceleration of domestic revenue. So that's not the only metric by itself. It's a full mosaic that I present that shows why the business is decelerating. And they're already losing money. So what's that worth in a rotation? A decelerating business in North America that loses money, that's offering their product for free right now, that you see corporate defections, that is also on the other side of bigger internet trends. Right, Andrew, I want to move topics now and talk to you about Bitcoin. And you tweeted out last week, short GBTC. This is Bitcoin Investment Trust. You were saying short that by Bitcoin because the spread here is over 40 percent. And you, I guess you expect that to close. Why? Oh, wow. It's going to close now sooner than I mean, today for a while. I think it opened this morning at possibly a 45 percent. And sometime during intraday, it went maybe down to 20 percent. Uh, I, so I, I'm not exactly sure as we speak right now what it is, possibly in the 30 percent. But as soon as futures come on the Bitcoin market, uh, we should see the, the price of the ETFs or whatever form of derivative that trades, uh, possibly a, a 3 percent, a 7 percent 
premium to net asset value versus 35 percent so yeah it, it's very compelling whenever that spread opens up on gbtc now the risk is if you short that naked without the hedge is your short bitcoin and even being short bitcoin 25 30 percent higher who knows what happens over a long weekend what do you think these futures are going to be used for are they going to be for used for more speculation or do you think it is going to be downside pressure that we see and ultimately what's your price target on bitcoin here what's fair <laughs> well, do you think? that's the irony of the whole thing is it's obvious speculation because the only alternative instead of speculation would be hedging and no one's hedging their bitcoins right now uh there's no one has who has to deliver a certain amount of bitcoin like a commodity uh so yeah it's, it's going to be for speculation uh what that does to the actual bitcoin market uh who knows i mean that, that's such a black box so much easier shorting companies that lose money in the middle of a bad rotation than to try to find out how bitcoin's going to trade in the next uh three weeks uh going into but the gbtc when that spread does open up it does put the odds in your favor to short that and if you want to buy bitcoin or just short it and you're short it at a then you're short bitcoin 30 40 percent higher it depends on where the premium is